Hello guys, good morning. Welcome to our My Trucking Life. I am CJC. We are just waking up in Birmingham outside the house factory again. It's just gone five o'clock in the morning. And we are heading down to Portsmouth with a load of houses for there. Um, what more can I say? Had a great night's sleep. It's just started to rain. So, we're going to be getting wet. I've been watching those fascinating videos about the, the thunderstorms and everything. I really wish I was caught up in those. Anyway, let's get this show on the road. We've got some miles to do. We have got 100 and... 57 miles to go we've got a nice little load I'll show you it later on but I did show it you yesterday as well but all it is is pretty much four single stacks really it's barely taller than the headboard but I'm not going to complain it was just what the doctor ordered so I could have uh, made yesterday a 15 hour shift, a uh, 13 hour shift, sorry, instead of a 15. You're gonna get on your side of the road? <coughs> Stupid little dyke. Wow. Does he think I was gonna move out the way for him? Cause there was nowhere I could have gone. Cinderella. I forgot I'd still got my beacons on from when I checked. Never mind. Ooh. Here we have a perfect example of two selfish, ignorant idiots. The red truck is slightly quicker than the blue truck, but the blue truck is too proud of himself to just back off one kilometre an hour to let the red guy get back in front of him and carry on his day. He's just keeping him out there, making him look an idiot, holding everyone up. We've probably got about a mile and a half of traffic behind us now thanks to this idiot. All he's got to do is just suck it up and accept that the red truck's quicker than him but no, no, he keeps over speeding as much as he can to claw back the difference. It's not even like he's going to lose any time or anything because there's no one else behind him. He's not going to lose out to any other lorries, he's just been an absolute selfish, inconsiderate driver. Alright, well we've just hopped onto the A34 now. <coughs> We're not doing too bad for time, it's 95 miles to go. All right, well, we're seven miles away from the bottom of the uh, A34. We're just coming past the beautiful Oshkosh. Pulling a tank. Not quite sure what it is, though. I'm sure someone will be able to tell me in the comments. This looks like one of them APCs. Um, it's looking like there's a bit of a delay along the bottom, probably the M27. So we're looking to get there about nine-ish now. Which is a shame because it's been such a good run down. It stopped raining after about two hours. And it's back again. I forgot to tell you, I did stop off at the services earlier on. Retention the straps like I always do, but it was piddling down with rain, so I got drenched and I couldn't obviously take the camera out. Oh, yeah, 23 miles to go. Oh, great. Now there's been what looks like an accident down here somewhere. 
Now it's hard to tell whether it's either on the roundabout or on this motorway, but I can go either way to where I've got to deliver. Right, I can't quite recall if I've done this one before. I'm pretty sure we have been here, but my memory's like a sieve. So, even if we have done it, I probably won't remember it until I'm right on the doorstep. So it's all going to be fun. All I've got is a road. It looks like we're here. Yes, that was simple enough. Just going to get into the site. That's going to be a pain by the looks. Especially with this guy bringing his big cement silo. Right guys, that was quicker than I thought. This gentleman here is unfortunately enough to break down. Something wrong with his hydraulics, but we were still able to squeeze around him, luckily. It's just the trees that are a nightmare, but never mind. We can only turn right out of this gate. Bit of a tight one to back in. My feet keep slipping on this pedal. My feet are get wet. But anyway, just about managed to reverse in here. The gate is big enough, yeah, but it could do with being a little bit bigger. Just to save any problems. Oh. Just move the overhang. Anyway. That's it, we're out of there. Just gonna find somewhere to park up in a second. We gotta have our half an hour break. As well as find out where we gotta go. And then I'll let you know. Alright, well, turns out the gods must have had a bit of a sixth sense. Because he's just rung to check up on me. Luckily I've already got my hands free kitting that in. We're going to be heading back up towards the house factory. So we're on 3 hours and 26 minutes driving. So I've got about an hour. Or at least 40 minutes until I need to park up. I don't see any of these very often. Something I'd love to drive one day, but they're, they're getting quite rare. The Renault Magnum guys. Absolutely glorious truck, and that one's a 520. That's from GA Shepherd. Looks pretty awesome. But Mr. Vowers is picking on our foreign friend here so he's gonna have to pull in this is what they do they go in front of you like so and then they say follow me right guys we have just been and had a another big wash at the services and uh, 30 minute break. Managed to get a coffee. Yes. Saying that, I've left it out, sorry. <laughs> sorry, I do apologise. Oh, I didn't mean it. We have precisely had 31 minutes of break now, so it is time to hit the road again. I always like to give it an extra minute or two just to make sure it's registered as a break. We got 117 miles to head back up to the house factory. And while I'm thinking about it, I've just gone through my comments on my videos and answered to a lot of you again. Um, Ian Shepherd, this is your shout out. I've finally remembered. I've just realised that I forgot to do it <coughs> after saying I would so long ago. <coughs> so I do apologise and I hope we, whatever your important day 
he had an important day because he had to also remove his beard. So whatever it was, I hope that went really well for you. And thank you for your continued support. So let's get cracking. Ah. Ah. Yes, I've just managed to get a coffee and I've had a cheeky little burger as well. It's always nice to have something hot. Nice warm meal. I like to have at least one warm meal a day. Just hope the uh, the A34 is nice where we get up to the top, the other side of Oxford. So come on Cinders, let's shake a tail feather because this Swift isn't moving over. Sorry, it's a seed, I thought it was a Suzuki Swift. Right, let's see you when we're up there, somewhere. Well guys, we are back at the house factory now. We are going to have to live load ready for tomorrow. And then hopefully I'll be able to make it down the road about an hour or two. We're just waiting for our colleague to leave the premises. All right, cheers mate. He has uh, very helpfully told me that the M40 is closed down at Junction 11. So now we can go in and live load and do some research about what's going on down there. So let's pull in while we can and get in position ready to get our load. All right, well, the downside of getting here just before two o'clock is the fact that I'm right in the middle of a shift change. So even though I'm the next to load, I've got a really long delay normally while they get used to what's going on while they shift change and hand over to the new crew. Everyone getting used to what's going on. But it's gave me time to uh, spruce Cinderella up a little bit. Now the mat's just drying off and uh, managed to clean her all up. Get everywhere looking spick and spam. Ignore my bin over there, that's just always there. But, um, you know, yeah, I could get her even more immaculate and have everything hidden away, but that'll just make it harder to get to. But you'll be pleased to know that out of the two hidden SD cards in Cinderella somewhere, along with the third one, which is still stuck in the roller, I have managed to find a total of zero None at all have surfaced while I've cleaned her up. I like to clean her two, two or three times a week at least. Even though I'm in, in and out of building sites, I hate having the dust around the cab. It really does my head in. So at least twice, I'll give her a good clean. I'm wiping her every day probably, but cleaning around the chairs and everything like that, I'll do that at least twice a week. And... Um, you got to keep your house tidy, that's what I've always been told. And, um, yeah, we're just trying to kill time while we're waiting to load. We've been here nearly half an hour now, so hopefully they're going to start putting some wood on me in a minute. Well, guys, we're out of the house factory now. It's half past three. And unfortunately, just seen another colleague and he's informed me about the M40 <laughs> being shut as well. So that's two people telling me to avoid it now. Now the load, it's a little bit taller than the cab. So it's nothing too, too major. But I've been a bit apprehensive strapping it up I've put a few extra diagonals on so I just wasn't a bit, wasn't too keen on how some of the stacks were uh, put together 
So uh, we're gonna pray to the M6 and the M5 gods that everything's okay up here. We should have a nice evening drive down the M5. After we get through the roadworks, that is. Oh. Well, I don't get to show you these very often. These are the roadworks on the M5 southbound. We've just got on off the M6 and everything was pretty good, to be honest. Nice, easy transition. Uh, we've now, after a little 50 mile an hour stint, we are now limited to 40 miles an hour as we're going over the raised, elevated area while they're carrying out work underneath on the viaduct. Apparently the structure of the road underneath was really bad, in really bad need of repair as well. And for some reason we've only got to do 40 miles an hour over the top of it, which is a bit of a ball ache. In fact, it's a lot of a ball ache to be fair. Considering how many years We've been driving over it at speed. 50 mile an hour is slow enough in my opinion. Anyway, looks like we're headed into a bit of rain. Hopefully we'll get a storm tonight like you guys were all treated to down south. Kev T's got a brilliant video on his channel. Go and check that out guys. I'll leave a link in the description if I remember. Yes, it's definitely getting a bit more turbulent down here, guys. We do have whales to the far right of us, though, so what do you expect? To the left, it's lovely blue skies. And to the right where Wales is, it's your Welsh weather. <laughs> it looks like it's coming our way though guys, so let's batten down the hatches. Why are these people so happy sitting behind a lorry? Why can't they just get over there? They can do 20 miles an hour more than the lorry can. 20 miles is a lot of distance, you know. You're not going to get much further by sitting behind him for the rest of the journey. It's no good dabbing your brakes, love. Oh. Why do you think they put three lanes on motorways and they stop us lorries going in them? Just so Pandora in a Freelander 2 can sit behind lorries all day. I don't think so. Now look, we got Mr. White Van Man who's getting a bit angry. Well, he's not angry, I guess. He's getting off at this next junction, I suppose. But look at this boat. Suddenly everything's okay because look at this boat, guys. It's a big army truck with a big army boat. Woo! Belonging to the Royal Marines. I salute you. Fabulous service they do for our country. All right, guys, we are at the pit stop. Uh, Chippenham, I believe. And this is what we got on. I just wasn't very keen on all the gaps in all the packs. And this one fell inside at the top, so I've put a diagonal one over there, a diagonal one over there, and a diagonal one over the back one. The only one I haven't put a diagonal on is this one. And it's all good. Cinderella is having a tea. And uh, I've just gone over into 105 litres, naughty, so she's had a bit of extra. Anyway, we are uh, on the A350, 
and uh, we're gonna be stopping somewhere along there hopefully this evening hopefully we can find a nice little cubby hole to park up in and get ourselves some grub please take receipt it even does a receipt that's lovely thank you very much please remove card awesome let's get cracking well guys I do apologize for the wind but I've had to get up on here tonight to show you this is my absolutely stunning view for tonight ah oh, it's absolutely breathtaking I can see all the weather fronts coming in across the hills it's raining over there and it's on its way around towards us so it's gonna get a bit wet and windy a bit later on hopefully it'll carry on curling around because it looks like it kind of might just be doing that but anyway absolutely stunning I didn't realize but apparently we're near to Longleat the huge safari path but um, I'm gonna get down anyway and stop this wind because I bet it's really annoying for you yes guys I am absolutely loving this scenery tonight I wanted to get somewhere special for me and for you to see and I think I've nailed it today I want to thank you all for watching I've put some pictures on Instagram and Facebook about my scenery and the view I've got tonight as well if you want to go and check them out and I shall speak to you all tomorrow guys have a good night